There's three types of drop down list you can add to a spreadsheet. So save yourself a whole load of pain and watch this video and I'll talk you through when to use each of the different types. Right, I've set up this spreadsheet here. I've got three different drop down list types on it. Type one, data validation. Great for data entry, very simple to set up too, but nowhere near as configurable as some of the others. Second one, form controls, brilliant for quite a lot of ways because it's still very easy to set up and it just gives this more professional appearance. It's very obviously a drop down, whereas data validation, maybe not so much. Now what this does is it outputs a number, which is the number from the list that you've just picked. Third type, ActiveX controls, highly configurable, very programmable, bit more time intensive in certain respects to set up. You pick it, it outputs the actual value that you've chosen, which can prove very useful in certain circumstances. I'll just show you how you can go about setting up each of these and why you might wanna use them. So here, right, what we're doing is data entry. So I've got this very small, as it happens, order table, and we want to put in customer segment and provinces. And we've got a particular list that we're allowed to pick from. So this is very much a job for data validation lists. OK, so I'll show you how you can set these up very quickly. So go to uh, the data menu on the ribbon, data validation. On here, you've got the settings. It says at the moment, any value. In other words, there's just no data validation. We're gonna pick a list. And then it says here, source. So the source of the list for the customer segment is this. Now it's automatically put all the uh, dollar signs around. So it's fixed that list. You click OK, and then you have your list working. Dead, dead simple. Now you can set it up all at once, for example, by doing that the same thing list source there okay and you can also for example just copy and paste data validation if you do a paste special and then you can click on validation and hit okay and that will also copy just the validation criteria so that's that set up now you can also hit alt and the down arrow and the enter key which can sometimes be a lot faster which is also quite useful it's not obvious when you look at a cell that it's got data validation on it it's not until you actually click in it or you select it that you'll get the actual arrow and if you start typing you know if i type excel for example you get this sort of uh, value doesn't match you can cancel that and then it will just wipe what you've typed which is kind of can be annoying because if somebody spells something wrong, so if I go up here, for example, and try and type home office and say I spell it wrong, it says, oh, um, retry, kind of frustrating. You need to know that there's a list on there. So you can actually remove these error messages by clicking on there. Okay, and that way then if I spell something incorrectly, it'll just let it go. I don't think that's particularly great. If you're gonna use data validation, you're using it for a reason, you wanna validate it. Data validation, definitely the way to go if you want a list and you're doing data entry. What it's not so great for is if you wanted to run some kind of report off of the back of it. Say, for example, you wanted to set something up that would like produce a chart based off of the customer segment. The problem is it doesn't really look like a drop down list. It's not until somebody clicks in it that they realize they've got a drop down list selector. Whereas if you look back at here, say a form control, you know, it's very obviously they've got to pick something. Same with an ActiveX control. Now I'll show you some of the things you can do with a form control. So what this is very good for is say driving out reports. So this is how you add one. You go to the developer tab, very quick way of adding a developer tab if you don't have it, it tends to be switched off by default. Up on the quick access toolbar, drop down, more commands, go to customize ribbon and straight away you should see it here and you can tick that box and hit okay. So I'm gonna insert this form control here, which is combo box. Now you can draw it freehand, but what I like to do is if you click on the Alt 
button and as you drag it around it'll snap to the edges of the cells right you right click on it and you do format control and your input range you can pick that and your cell link is where you want the output of the choice so i'm just going to put it here for the moment and hit ok so now when i click on this i've got my list and it tells me the number that i've picked from the list sometimes that's great actually because it's quite easy to deal with numbers in excel so if you want anything where you're going to be doing calculations based off of this that can be really useful but if you're trying to run say something that requires the lookup not so useful one thing that is great and i do like about these form controls is they're so quick and simple to to set up there and they kind of look the business you know on here this is an active x control for example but this one i feel you know it's just nice and simple you can even assign a macro to it only one mind which will let you basically control uh, like a macro from the item that's picked so you'd be able to detect what's been picked by like looking at that cell for example next to it and run all kinds of things in your spreadsheet so it's a great little halfway towards an ActiveX control I think it looks that looks the business it's really simple to set up and you've and you've got the ability to use a macro I use these a lot I find them very very useful now how do you get around the fact that it outputs this number what if you want it to the actual item that's been picked because there's nothing in that cell underneath if i click on that and drag it around you can see it's not actually it's not outputting anything into its position it can be you can put this anywhere what you're going to need to do is put some kind of formula underneath or anywhere really which uses that number to pick to find from the list so i'm going to use the offset formula oops don't want double equals at the beginning of it we're saying that we want the top of the list just fix that with f4 how many rows down do we want or the number from the list and it's as simple as that columns we don't want to offset at all so we put zero and there we go so now whatever we pick on here will be replicated in that cell you can now use that in in lookups and things like that quite simple what you can't do with this control though if you look at the format control Yes, you can put some kind of 3D shading on it. You can't have it move in size of cells, but you can have it kind of moving and things. You can lock its aspect ratio, but change the number of drop down rows, right? But, but generally speaking, there's not that much in the way of controls. I just click on 3D shading and you can see it sort of like drops into your spreadsheet a bit, can look kind of nice. Type number three, the ActiveX control. Now this, if you're working with a lot of macros in your spreadsheets, definitely the way to go. Everything about it is configurable. So you can move it, size it, change what's in the list, all from all by code. But actually to set it up in the first place is not too bad. It's slightly more manual than the other two I've shown you, but it's not too bad. So if I put one on this screen here. So again, you need the developer tab insert activex control here and you can draw it again same way i just drew the other one every time you click on it you it's just highlights it as if you want to do something with it and that's because we're in this design mode you actually have to unclick design mode in order to use it now at the moment it's not linked to anything so how do we link it you need to be back in design mode all right click on here if you click format control what you'll see is well first thing you can move in size with cells but it doesn't appear to be anywhere to put the list in and the reason for that is that it's all in something called the properties box so if we go onto properties you can see now this is what i mean by highly configurable you have all of these things that can be changed not only can they be changed directly by typing in but you can also change them with vba code just by saying the actual code would be combo box one in this case dot whatever property equals and then whatever you want to change it to but anyway to keep things simple list fill range is your range of cells now unfortunately you can't just do this right so list fill range you have to manually type so we can see it's b3 to b15 now you can link it to very you know across different sheets and things like that 
but we'll just put that there for the moment. And link cell is effectively your output again, so we'll put that at D18. So D18. We'll close that. Out of design mode. And now we have our list, and it's kicking out the actual name. Now, if you look at this, I, this looks is nasty. Yeah, um, it's cutting off the bottom of the text. And part of the reason for that is that it's set with all this sort of 3D marking and stuff. So, luckily, it's all pretty configurable. So, go back to the properties code. You can go to categorize actually, and then you can look at just the appearance things. So special effects sunken, I'm gonna go with flat. So now you can read it straight away, so that's good. Border style, we're gonna put border on because otherwise when we click out of it, you wouldn't have seen it. But you can have things like different colors of font. Back color as well, same thing, you can have any color of background. Some examples here, but again, you can just program anything, any color at all, if you know, say the RGB code for it. It's fine, it'll accept anything. You can change things like the font, for example, which you can't do on a form control. So you can put any, any kind of font, any kind of size, bold, italic, if you wanted in there, you know? And the other thing I think that's kind of nice is that it outputs the actual value. That saves having to use any kind of formulas to convert from like the number in the list back. Bit of an advantage. If I go back into design mode, for example, and right click, you can go view code. This then, this defaulted to a change event procedure. So the, whatever code I write in there would like, would run every time somebody changes what's in the dropdown. So if I move that from saying Newfoundland to any other item, this macro would run. So if I just put as an example, uh, change, and then take it out of design mode, you can see when I pick there, we get that macro runs. That in itself is nothing you couldn't run with the form control, but the beauty of this one is you have a ton of other event procedures. So if I just go again to view code, we have on combo box one, all of these different types of events that we can put code onto. So you can have code run just by somebody clicking on it, somebody clicking on the drop down itself, somebody typing like a key press whilst they're in it, for example, somebody moving onto it or off of it, actually even the mouse going over the top of it, massively configurable um, control this. And in fact, if you're designing your own user forms, it's pretty much what you want to be using for sure. And I'll just show you how you might, say that's the click one, right? I'll show you one of these properties and how you might go about changing this. Properties, back, ground color, so the back color here, yeah? So if we take that back color there, which is white at the moment, it's a code. So we're gonna do combo box one dot, and as soon as you put the dot, you get su suggestions, but back color equals that when we click on it, right? Now, let's go back here and we'll say we want the back color to be gray. So now we have a back color of gray, going to do this and when you click on the button we're going to make it go grey. So now what we've got running is take it off design mode, process properties. So now when we click in it we've got all manner of events firing. <laughs> so it's white when something's selected and the moment we click on it it goes grey. The moment we change it we get this change thing firing. All total waste of time but <laughs> just a demonstration of, of what we can do. One bonus tip here, right? And that is for any drop down box, at the moment you can see that the list finishes at the bottom here with Alberta. And if I was to type in up for Excel on the bottom of that list, not, it's not gonna pick it up. If I want that to happen, all I have to do, I just delete that, is turn my list into a table first. So that's Control T. So it's got a header row. Hit OK. Now, you know, you're going to get some crazy formatting, but you can play about with that if you don't like it and just go back and on. So at the moment, then, it's like that. If I now type in up for Excel on the bottom there, the table has now expanded. You can see this sort of little icon here. And because um, these 
controls were linked to a range that was in a table, it's automatically expanded the list size for me. And it does that for all of them, every single one of these. Great little bonus tip there at the end, whichever one you're using, run your lists as tables. That's the three different types of drop-down lists that you can use in Excel, data validation, form controls, and ActiveX controls. ActiveX controls are gonna to be total overkill for most everyday needs, but absolutely brilliant for running you know, heavily laden coded spreadsheets or stuff you really wanna pin down. Absolutely brilliant at the very top end of it. Data validation, lists, really, really simple, easy to set up, great for sort of data entry and things like that. But they don't really look like drop down lists. So if you're trying to create some kind of dashboard or something, probably not where you want to go. And then this sort of compromise solution in the middle, form controls, I actually think brilliant and sort of dashboards and running little sort of, um, you know, charts and things like that, that you want to be able to select sort of different types of chart. Great little compromise there. You can run sort of VLOOKUP, some ifs, sort of index matches, all, all manner of formulas off of the result of that to create different reports. And they're very simple to set up and very easy to configure. Hope that was useful. You know, good luck building your spreadsheets with the drop down lists.